Hello everyone, welcome to Zimba Motoring. My name is Les. Now today I'm gonna to show you guys what it's like to live with the brand new 2019 G29 BMW Z4 S Drive 20i M Sport. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you my observations as a current E89 Z4 owner, and I've had that car for the last three years, moving into the brand new G29, and what I've noticed, what I've loved, what I haven't liked, just my general overall impressions, and whether you guys should buy this car or not. So, let's get started. So this car comes with 238 foot-pounds of torque and 197 brake horsepower. It sounds fantastic. It reminds me of a Mini Cooper S. It's got that exact same engine tone. <laughs> Next up, you notice, unlike my E89 Z4, this Z4, the G29, doesn't die up top. It keeps pulling. Even at 5,000, 6,000 RPM. Really good, I'm sure that additional torque, that additional 40 foot pounds of torque is coming in handy because this feels much quicker than my car. And obviously you got those pops and bangs straight away. <laughs> oh yes. Here we go again. That's foot to the floor. fast it's still a two litre four cylinder engine but it's it's good fun it's great fun and the exhaust note really sets this car off it sounds brilliant wow really surprised actually pleasantly surprised I'm not gonna lie to you I wasn't sure when I jumped into it especially the looks and then it's a much bigger car. Everything else seems to have bulked up. It's still got the Z4 character. It's still got that fun, sporty nature about it, which is good. It hasn't lost its personality, even though I feel like the Z4 has now grown up. So, one of the most impressive aspects about the new Z4 is the adaptive. M Sport suspension. I mean, on this real bumpy road, doing 60, and it's just soaking all up. Doesn't come with those Bridgestone run flats. Obviously, these tires are a huge help. So it's sitting on Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires, the best tires you can get along with the Pilot Sport 4s. It handles really well. Great brake feel. And by the way, if I'm on the brakes in this car, it's recharging the battery. So. It's got brake regeneration. Brilliant. So uh, what else can I tell you about this car? So you got your beautiful TFT 10.25 inch screen right in front of us, displaying our rev counter on the right hand side, a speedometer on the left, and right in the center, you've got your satellite navigation. This car comes with lane departure warning. So if I just do this now, look, look, it's just steering for me. So many cool features. I must say something about this eight-speed Steptronic automatic gearbox. It's really good. Again, very similar to the E89. This must be marginally faster on the terms of shift speed. But yeah, great gearbox, great engine, great exhaust sound, great suspension, great ride. So this car does feel like they've taken the E89, everything that makes the E89 so good, and they've turned it up to 11. It genuinely does feel very good. As I said, it just feels like a grown up Z4. I'm sure once we see them more often on the road, 
everyone's going to be more positive towards him in terms of the styling. So it's growing on me. I tell you what, after three days, I'm really starting to like the styling and I love everything else about this car. I love the rear styling, but it's just the front end I'm still trying to get used to. Yes, it's not going to set the world alight in terms of power, but if you're comparing 20i to 20i, dare I say it, this is the better car. This car comes with a launch control feature. So basically, Sport Plus mode is on. Put it in manual, turn the ESP uh, dynamic traction control activated, foot on a brake, load up, and there it goes. Woo! I'm going to ask it to show me all the sport displays. Just so to show you guys how cool this car is. So driving information, sport displays, and look, there you go. I've got my G-meter. I've got amount of torque I'm using, the power, the boost bar, as well as the oil temps. So already, there you go. So it's telling me I use 100 foot-pounds of torque and 50 horsepower. show you the keys. BMW have really upped their game. So this is my current E89 Z4 key and here's the brand new G29 Z4 key. Obviously, like all the other BMW models, the Z4 has been given the same key, but what a step up. I mean, if you compare, very simple. So in my old one, you've got unlock button, lock, and the boot button. On this one, again, you've got unlock button, lock, boot button, and then you've got another button at the bottom. So on the new one, you've got four buttons. You've got the signature M colors on there, but it's a really nice shape, great to hold. And unlike my E89 Z4, you can now put the roof up with the key. So in my E89 Z4, I know as stock, you couldn't put the roof up. You can put it down, but you can put it up. Whereas on now, on the new one, you can put the roof up and down. So before we get started, as it's a Z4, it's a convertible. Let's put the roof down. So the new Z4 obviously comes with a soft top roof. It now takes half the time as it takes in the E89 Z4. So it now goes down in only 10 seconds, which is rather impressive. So now it's fully gone down. And one of the great pluses of having a soft top is obviously boot space. So without the hard top roof, now you've got plenty more boot space. BMW claim this car has got 50% more boot capacity than the E89 Z4. I actually took my girlfriend to the airport, uh, put her luggage in there and all my other camera gear and everything fit just fine. In the E89 you had a partitioner a divider, so for you to put the hard top roof down, you had to put the partitioner down first, which is what killed the boot space because with the roof down, you couldn't really fit much in it. I think with the roof down in my E89, I can only just about fit a, uh, a small sized suitcase in there. Next up is the looks. Now, this car has definitely split opinions amongst the Z4 community. And I, for one, when I picked it up, I wasn't so sure on the front end myself. But I'm not gonna lie to you, after three days of living with the car, it's really starting to grow on me. And I've even had compliments from other people saying this car looks absolutely fantastic and people have even called me a footballer with this car so overall I think the looks are definitely growing on me. The rear is certainly my favourite aspect of the car. It's wide and I love the L-shaped LED taillights. So this car is longer, wider, taller but it does have a shorter wall base than the E89 Z4 and it's got wider tracks to obviously help with agility and handling but this car is radically different from the E89 Z4. BMW radically revised the proportions of it. Hence, if you look at a E85 or E86 Z4 and then compare it to an E89, you can sort of see an evolution from the front bonnet where you can see the lines on the bonnet and then now in the E89, that line on the bonnet continues around the badge. So you can sort of see the evolution, whereas this is completely different. It hasn't got that family tree look, but do you know what? I love BMW for doing that. This car is completely different from all the other BMW models they make at the moment. Next, one of the things I've really enjoyed is the exhaust note. 
this car is notably louder than the E89 Z4 even though they've both got the same 2 litre 4 cylinder turbocharged engine obviously this car is making more power it's now 197 versus 181 in the E89 and obviously 236 foot pounds of torque versus 199 foot pounds of torque in the E89 so overall this car sounds much better and I love the new exhaust pipes on either side of the bumper so the exhaust note has been a real treat on this car it's much better One of the biggest improvements I've noticed over the E89 Z4 is the amount of tech you now get in the new G29 Z4. This car is loaded with tech. So first of all, you've got a BMW Live cockpit. There is this lovely TFT fully digital instrument cluster. And then coming up to the infotainment system. So if I click on media, I'll go straight to all the radio stations, Bluetooth audio, screen mirroring, mobile devices so I can pair my phone. If I then go back into communication, it's got all my contacts, telephone, BMW assistance, BMW messages, uh, mobile devices, and I can personalize the menu. Next up, you've got your navigation, BMW personal assistant. So if I just say, hey, BMW. Hello, what can I help you with? And then I can then say whatever I want and it will help me out. And if I set a destination and accept it, it then comes up into there and then I can go on. It's got a driving style analysis, then energy flow, your driver profiles, then owner's handbook. So this is really quite cool. So if I'm stuck on something, I could just search within here. I don't have to go through pages and pages of owner's manuals anymore. It's all integrated within the car. This car also comes with the BMW digital key. So I can sync the car key with my smartphone so literally I don't actually need the key I can just use my phone to start the car up if I sync the smartphone with the car all I have to do is come in the car put my smartphone where the wireless charging is and then it recognizes and then the car starts so it's very very cool tech your parking assistant so if I press that you got park assist and then you got reverse assistant. This car, it can scan a gap and park itself. Then you got reversing assistant. And then if you put it in reverse, there's a reversing camera. So if I put it on here, as you can see, the whole steering wheel just moved. So as you can see on the heads up display, it shows me the speed limit, the speed I'm doing, where I am in the rev counter. And also if you've got the satellite navigation on, the maps are also displayed on the heads up display. Another cool feature I thought to show you guys with regards to the instrument cluster is the fact that you can then configure on the right hand side. You can have either your music, you can have uh, your driving mode. So if I put it in Sport Plus, it changes. And if I put it into Comfort, the dials change. Eco Pro, it goes blue, adaptive, and it changes back to orange. Next up, you've got your miles per gallon up there and then your refueling. So it tells you your fuel consumption. You've got your G meter. That's actually quite cool. So I've been trying to see how far I can get on the G meter as I've been going along. You've then got your horsepower readings and your torque readings and then back to your music. And then one more thing I thought to show you guys with regards to the iDrive and infotainment system. So if you push the iDrive command up, it goes up to your shortcuts. So it's got valet parking mode. This car has a valet parking mode, which is really cool. So I can change the ambient lighting. So if I click there, I can go through all the different colors. So we've got bronze, orange, white, blue, green, lilac, really cool. Let me just select blue for now. And as you can tell, it changes up there. Underneath the speaker, it then changes to blue and on here as well on the center console. Fully loaded with tech. This is the new Z4's party piece, the amount of tech you get for your money. Another aspect I've really enjoyed over my last few days with this car is the interior cabin and quality. Now this car comes with these beautiful magma red leather interior with decorative stitching and it feels a step up from the previous Z4 in terms of the quality of the materials, the feel, the smell. It's a really great place to be. The center armrest is all covered in, in nice leather, but the stitching all over the dashboard, all over the doors, it's really nice and it's a great place to be. So the interior cabin and the tech and the quality and the steering, it's all fabulous. So 
the interior is a huge thumbs up from me. One downside I'd say is the storage bins within the doors have sort of shrunk. In the E89Z4, they used to be a huge storage bin, so I used to put my stuff in there, water or water bottles. They've reduced natural storage capacity within the doors, so that's a slight downside. I can't fit as much in there, but in terms of storage capacity, you've got obviously your center console armrest where you've got your two cup holders. You can fit some bits in there. Then you've got a little bit here where you've got your wireless charging and then you've got your glove box and then behind you you've got your storage net still so they've kept the storage net which was in the E89Z4 and you've also got a load 3 facility right there so you've still got some formal room so you can put your sunglasses in there and any other bits and if you're a short person then you've got a little bit of uh, room behind the seats. In terms of running costs, well, to fill up the tank, it cost me £63, which is actually quite equal to the E89Z4. This car apparently has a slightly smaller fuel tank than the E89Z4. Next up is the tyres. Now, this car comes with 275-35-19s at the rear and 255-35-19s at the front. And to replace this Michelin tyres, you're looking at 710 pounds all four fitted which is not actually a bad price when you're on it it can be quite thirsty and obviously it pops and bangs it's dumping fuel into the exhaust but overall not bad in terms of fuel economy well in terms of value the 20i m sport is supposedly going to be the best-selling model of the z4s and in terms of actual value this car is 42,000 pounds including the options it's got if you want some more options then i recommend maybe upgrading to the 30i there's a four thousand pound premium the 30i comes with 258 brake horsepower and then after that you've got the m40i another observation one of my passengers made is the amount of buffeting that's happening in the new one compared to the e89z4 and i seem to think i know the reason why because the e89z4 comes with four windows so you've got the two main ones and two little ones right behind it so obviously on the motorway you've got all four windows up there's less turbulence there's less air interfering whereas in the new one obviously those windows are now gone hence more buffeting overall guys yes the styling is splitting opinion i'm still not fully convinced on the front end but it's growing on me but that aside if you look at the car objectively in terms of the technology on offer the interior quality the fact that the roof is now 10 seconds quicker it's more efficient it's overall a better car than the e89z4 unfortunately you know for some of us guys who like the classic e89 looks or the previous versions yes bmw have shied away from those classic looks and gone completely different in terms of design philosophy but overall the z4 i think is a fantastic car and i highly recommend you guys going to test drive it and trying it for yourself it's just a great overall package and a great modern sports car it does everything you want it's got bigger cabin it is an overall improvement on the e89 and for that you can't knock bmw for doing what they've done so a huge thank you to chandler's bright and bmw for giving me the keys to this z4 for the last few days if you're interested in this car or would like to go for a test drive then please click the links below so until next time guys thanks for watching make sure you subscribe share and like this video also click the notification button so you know exactly when i post another video but until next time guys hope you enjoyed the z4 and i'll see you next time